Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you everything you could possibly want to know about the BMAT, what it is, where and when you'll take it, and which universities require you to take this test. It's a bit different from the UCAT and it's feared by a lot of medical applicants. Keep listening to find out everything you could possibly want to know and why there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Hi everyone, my name's Jess from MedicMind and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Birmingham. So what is it? The BMAT stands for the Biomedical Admissions Test and it's used by some universities to rank applicants for medical and healthcare courses instead of the UCAT. It's a bit different from the UCAT as it's a paper-based exam. Like the UCAT, however, it also lasts two hours and it's split into three sections. It's testing your ability to apply scientific and mathematical knowledge, as well as your problem solving, critical thinking, and written communication skills. The BMAT is split into three sections, aptitude and skills, scientific knowledge and applications, and the writing task. The first section, aptitude and skills, is looking at your ability to solve problems, analyze data, and also draw conclusions from arguments. It's got two sections, problem solving and critical thinking. There also used to be a section called data analysis, but that's no longer used for 2020. So if you see that in any past papers, don't worry, you can skip it. All the questions are multiple choice with 35 in total, and you've got 60 minutes to complete this section. The best way to prepare for this section is practice. We have all questions back from 2003 arranged by topic on our website. And for problem solving, we have videos walking through common questions also on our YouTube page. The second section is scientific knowledge and application. All of the questions in this section should be testing scientific knowledge that you should have learnt at GCSE. There will be six to seven questions on each of the subjects of biology, chemistry, physics and maths. All of the questions in this section are multiple choice and you have 30 minutes to complete this section. The most important thing you can do for this section is download the content specification from the BMAP website. Because although the standard is said to be of a GCSE, there might be some things that you didn't cover under your exam board. And if you're not taking the subject to A-level, you might need a refresher of your knowledge anyway. The final section of the BMAT is the writing task. You'll get a choice of three essay questions and you choose one to write about. And for this section, you only have 30 minutes. This section is looking at your ability to construct an argument and communicate it effectively. You'll need to be able to form an introduction that shows you know some background about the topic, think through your arguments for and against what they're talking about, and also come to a well thought out conclusion. I found this one of the most time pressured parts of the exam, and I don't think I'm alone. If you want to find out more in detail about how to prepare for each section of the BMAT, check out the links in our description below. Another difference to the UCAT is that you'll have to wait a bit longer to get your BMAT scores. Usually it will be at the end of the month in which you took the test. Keep watching and we'll chat a bit more about the testing dates for the BMAT as well. So let's talk a bit about scores. In sections one and two, there's one mark for each correct answer you get and there's no negative marking. Your total raw marks are then added up and they're standardised to give you a score between one and nine, with nine being the highest. You'll be given a histogram showing the range of marks for the year that you took the test, but the median score is usually about 5.0 and 6.0 is the score that only about 10% of test takers will get. Meanwhile, the essay in section three is marked by two independent markers. They'll give you a score from zero to five for your content, and then they'll give you a score that's either A, C, or E for the quality of your written English. The score from these two markers is then averaged out to give you your final section three score, and 5A is the highest. So one of the main differences between the BMAT and the UCAT is the fact that far fewer universities require you to take the BMAT. So it's possible to apply so that you don't have to take the test at all. This is something quite a few of my friends and classmates did do when we were applying, but I wouldn't really encourage it because the fact that so many fewer people take the BMAT means that cutoff scores actually tend to be lower and you don't have to do as well as you think you might have to. And most importantly, with some practice, it's not actually difficult to do very well. Currently, there are seven universities that require the BMAT. Brighton and Sussex, Cambridge, Imperial, Lancaster, Leeds, Oxford and UCL while Manchester and Kiel require you to take the BMAT if you're an international student. So it's not just Oxbridge. There's actually quite a wide range of universities that ask you to take the BMAT. And I definitely wouldn't let this one test put you off from applying to them. So when and where? 
the key dates for the 2020 BMAT are registration for the November exam is from the 1st of September to the 1st of October and the test and the 27th of November for this year and you'll get the results back on the 27th of November and finally the cost the BMAT costs £49 to take in November with an additional fee if you apply late and some test centres will also charge you an administration fee. Check out the BMAT website at admissionstesting.org which has all the official details as well as details of how you can get your fee reimbursed if you're eligible for other forms of support. My final piece of advice is do not be put off by the fact that this is taking an extra test. The BMAT is quite different from the UCAT and you never know, this might be your time to shine. And with the amount of tests you'll end up doing as a medical student and as a doctor, you can never get too much practice. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.